So we're not talking about extreme minimalism here. We're literally just talking about getting rid of the excess. Hey everyone, welcome to part two in a series where we're learning about living with the author of this book, Slow Simple Living for a Frantic World, says is a happier, more fulfilling, value-based life. In this series, I'm showing you how to use a planner to implement the tips that the author teaches in this book. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'm going to leave the link down in the description below so you can watch that video, get caught up, and then come back to this video. When I was completing the exercise for understanding or defining my why, I began to see that I really have to change my way of living in order to become the person that I want to be. I need to spend less time managing all this excess stuff in my life and more time on my priorities. So step two in this book is to declutter. The author writes, simplicity in our physical environment is a huge part of creating a simpler life. And she mentions that she started her journey with decluttering because it's often easier to start with the external versus starting with the internal, emotional, and mental changes that need to be made. Another benefit of starting with our physical environment is we can give ourselves some easier wins here. We can physically see these changes happening. It helps us to get the ball rolling and to motivate us. Also, decluttering fits into this idea of intentionality where we are keeping the items that we intentionally want to keep, really thinking about what we want to remain in our lives. That's such an important part of the simplification process. So we're not talking about extreme minimalism here. We're literally just talking about getting rid of the excess. I know I personally have a lot more stuff than I need and all that extra excess can be donated to someone who actually needs it. The author discusses breaking down the decluttering process with super small action steps. So in the book, she goes into how she started by just decluttering her purse and then she moved on to the two front seats in her car, the back seats, and then eventually she started with the utensil drawer in her kitchen and she worked her way drawer by drawer to finish all the drawers in the kitchen and then moved on to the next step. It was only tackling a very small step each day. And conquering these tiny projects built up her confidence in herself to complete the project as a whole. So then she was able to take on more. And eventually she decluttered her entire house. In terms of using my planner, um, one of the things that I'm using my planner for is to keep my decluttering challenge schedule in there. So it's going to list out all of the tiny tasks that I'm going to be working on each day. And in order to create this list, I walked through my house and I broke up each room into tiny little tasks. So for example, my powder room, I broke up into drawer number one, drawer number two, and then the cabinet, instead of just saying like the powder room. The primary bedroom was broken up into closet clothes rod number one, closet clothes rod number two, closet shelf one, closet shelf two, and so on. I'm giving myself like three and a half months to work on this, which sounds like a lot of time, but I'm the type of person who gets overwhelmed very easily. I've mentioned this in my other videos. And so it really helps me if I can break things up into small action items. So my goal is to declutter at least one area on my decluttering challenge list per day. However, if I start to declutter that area and then I'm feeling like super motivated to move on to the next like drawer or next tiny area on the list, I will allow myself to keep going. But that idea is that I'm not trying to tackle an entire room in one day, pulling everything out, you know, and making that huge mess and then having to walk away when life happens and you can't finish it. I'm 
only working on tiny areas at a time. So I'm going to link a list of all of the tiny areas that I will be working on in my house. But of course your home is going to be different. So you'll have to kind of break it down into your own list. This is just something to help you get started with that, give you an example in that process. And in the next video, I'm going to show you my exact decluttering process that I'm going to be using and how my planner is incorporated into that process. If you want to get started before next week though, or if you want to try a different technique than what I'm trying out, there are great resources online. For example, Dana White, I'm gonna link her YouTube channel down below and she has a video where she walks you through the entire thought process of decluttering area in her home. And I think it's really helpful to watch that video so you get an understanding of how to handle each type of item and like the decision making process that goes into that. There's also Marie Kondo's method. I did this when I moved out of my first apartment and I found it to be really helpful. So let's talk about the different obstacles that you may face during the decluttering process and what the author says are the most common obstacles. The first one is fear. And this is like fear of losing your sense of identity. So in the book, she gives this example of how she used to have this jewelry business and that business ended up not being what she felt was right for her so she just kind of gave up on it and she had this like looming sense of fear surrounding all these items that she was keeping that you know she was giving up on this dream for herself but once she was able to get rid of those items she was able to relieve herself of this feeling of self-loathing or feeling of failure by you know moving past that another obstacle is external resistance this would be like your family members who live in your home resisting you giving up items and her advice for that is just focus on the areas where you have your items stored lead by example and hopefully they will see that and be a little more supportive of the whole process. Another obstacle is internal resistance. And here she's referring to feelings of being paralyzed because you're just so overwhelmed by how much that needs to be done. And in order to overcome that, she says, go back and break down the tasks even more because if that's happening, you are possibly not breaking them down enough. Another reason why you would have internal resistance is if you are just simply tired. So then take the rest that you need and then come back and try to declutter again after you have rested. And she says it can also help if you check in with your why in the last video we were talking about what are the reasons for why we want to simplify our lives. Who is that person that we want to become? How is simplifying our life going to help us to become that person? Checking in with your why will help remind you why you're putting so much energy into this, what your end goal is, and that will motivate you to move forward. Another obstacle is sentimentality. You are emotionally attached to an object because you associate it with maybe you know, good memories of your past or maybe a family member. Obstacle five is money spent. That's personally my biggest obstacle because I just feel this wave of guilt about, you know, money wasted if I'm getting rid of something. The just in case obstacle is you're worried that you will have to spend money on that item again or you won't be able to find that item again when you actually need to use it. That's also something that I struggle with when I'm trying to get rid of things. I'm worried that there's gonna be some situation where I will need it and I won't be able to find it. In the book, she offers solutions to all of these obstacles. I don't wanna give away everything from the book. So definitely check that out if you want to learn more about that. Something else that I'm going to be doing is writing down in my planner what the most common obstacles are that I personally struggle with and then coming up with a solution for how to overcome that obstacle. So just to review, the 
action steps for this video are to make a list of each of the areas in your home that need to be decluttered and break it down into very tiny action steps. And the second action is to write down the obstacles that you could potentially run into and try to come up with solutions for how to overcome those obstacles. In the next video, I'm going to be discussing in detail what my decluttering process is going to be and how I'm going to be using my planner in order to do that. I'm going to share a decision tree printable with you and walk you through the entire